Welcome back, Classic Chevy aficionados. Kevin Hillner here, your host at Classic Chevy Revival, where we take a nostalgic ride through the pages of Tri-5 history. And today we're putting the spotlight on one of the most iconic vehicles of its time, the 57 Chevy Bel Air. Evolution of the 57 Chevy initially began when General Motors executives wanted an entirely new car for 1957, but production delays necessitated the 55-56 design for one more year. Ed Cole, the chief engineer for Chevrolet, dictated a series of changes that significantly increased the cost of the car. These changes included a new dashboard, a sealed cowl, and the relocation of air ducts to the headlight pods, which resulted in the distinctive chrome headlight that helped make the 1950 Chevrolet a classic. 14-inch wheels replaced the 15-inch wheels from previous years to give the car a lower stance. And a wide grille was used to give the car a wider look from the front. The now famous 1957 Chevrolet tail fins were designed to duplicate the wide look in the rear. Bel Air models, though maintaining the same chassis, powertrains, and body were given upscale gold trim, the mesh grille insert, and front fender chevrons as well as a Chevrolet script on the hood and the trunk were all rendered in anodized gold. The 57 Chevrolets did not have an oil pressure gauge or a voltmeter. The base engine was an inline six cylinder called the Blue Flame 6. The engine was smoother running than the V8. Carburation came from a single one barrel carburetor. In the fall of 1956, Chevrolet dealerships across the nation showcased the 1957 models, marking a pivotal moment in automotive history. The 57 Chevy wasn't just a car, it was a statement. With an impressive 460 model to color combinations, Chevrolet offered consumers unprecedented customization options. Imagine strolling into a dealership and choosing between Imperial Ivory over Dusk Pearl, Larkspur Blue over Harvard Blue, or you could get Matador Red. The 57 Chevy was more than transportation, it was a work of art. On December 8, 1956, the 1957s were debuted in New York City. GM stylist Claire McKeegan oversaw the design and said he and the design staff were under great pressure to add distinction to the 57 model. And this according to Pat Chappelle's book, The Hot One, Chevrolet 1955 to 1957. The iconic status of the 1957 Chevy Bel Air, it, it comes down to when we think of American automotive excellence. There's one name that resonates, the Chevy Bel Air. From its inception in 1950 to the conclusion of the production run in 1975, the Bel Air was a symbol of classic muscle cars available in both hardtop and convertible versions. The 57 Chevy Bel Air, affectionately known as the 57 Chevy represented the pinnacle of the second generation before the car underwent significant changes in the third generation from 1958 onwards. Enthusiasts worldwide can't help but include this beauty in their top classic cars of all time. So let's take a closer look at the diverse body styles that made the 57 Chevy Bel Air a standout. From the elegant convertible to the stylish sport coupe, sport sedan, four-door sedan, and your two-door sedan, the innovative two-door nomad wagon, and the practical Townsman four-door station wagon, plus an upscale trim option called the Del Rey. Chevrolet catered to every taste and preference, and the introduction of 17 color combinations with seven being brand new for consumers showcased Chevrolet's commitment to providing choices that reflected the vibrant spirit of the era. The heartbeat of the 57 Chevrolet Bel Air lay beneath its hood. With a range of powerful engine options, the standard 235 cubic inch six-cylinder engine provided a reliable foundation. Still, the true enthusiast opted for one of the five available V8 engines, each offering a unique driving experience. The dual carburetor option featuring the 270-horsepower 283 cubic inch V8 engine became the street king of the 50s, earning a reputation as the engine to beat. In the technological realm, the 57 Chevy Bel Air was a trailblazer. The introduction of the Rochester Ramjet continuous mechanical fuel injection system was groundbreaking. 
For a mere $480, owners could equip their 57 Chevy with this cutting-edge fuel injection technology, a first for General Motors. The fuel injection V8 became a game-changer, not only glorified in Chevrolet's initial ads for achieving one horsepower per cubic inch, but also earning the 57 Chevy a place among the most expensive collector cars on the market today. The 57 Chevy offered a dynamic driving experience with its two-speed power glide transmission, or you could get the three-speed manual transmission. And the 57 Chevy also boasted innovative features like the turbo guide transmission, enhancing the driving experience with a smoother shifting transmission. There's a new word for smooth, and Chevy's got it. Turbo glide. There's a new word for action, and Chevy's got it. Turbo glide. Turbo Glide, the first and only triple turbine transmission. Exclusive new extra cost option on the 57 Chevrolet. Turbo Glide's triple turbine response gives you smooth, immediate action. With Chevy's Turbo Glide, all you ever feel is wonderful. You step on the gas, and Turbine One starts you off instantaneously. As you accelerate, Turbine Two goes to work so smoothly you never know it. Coming into cruising speed, Turbine 3 picks up the pace. Again, so smoothly you never notice a thing. Turbo Glide needs no load. For all forward speeds, you simply stay in drive. No shifting. See your authorized Chevrolet dealer and drive Turbo Glide. There may be other cars in Chevy's field, but they're not in Chevy's class. And one reason is Turbo Glide, the first and only automatic drive with triple turbo. The dual carb option, while not as expensive as fuel injection, let's say, it was more popular in 57, offering buyers a choice between the hydraulic cam 240 uh, horsepower 283 or the hot 270 horsepower solid lifter equipped engine. And one of the most captivating aspects of the second generation models, especially the 57 Chevy Bel Air, is, is its iconic design elements. The front grille, inspired by Ferrari, added a touch of sophistication, while the rear tail fins paid homage to the new age of jet engines in military aircraft. The rocket hood ornaments and chrome headliner bands on hardtop models, they were more than embellishments. They represented a period of rising prosperity in the United States and the end of an era of austerity. The 57 Chevy Bel Air wasn't just about performance. It was a symbol of luxury. Bel Airs could be loaded with optional features that rivaled more expensive U.S. cars. Imagine equipping your 57 Bel Air with a spare tire carrier, commonly called the Continental Kit, rear wheel skirts, bumper guards, spotlights, electric windows and seats, power steering and brakes, signal-seeking radio, a tissue dispenser, tinted glass, and even air conditioning. This unique concept allowed buyers to customize their Bel Air to match the luxury features found in higher-priced vehicles, showcasing Chevrolet's commitment to being America's low-priced leader. In total, about 702,651 Bel Airs were sold, encompassing two doors, four doors, convertibles, and station wagons. To put this into perspective, the 210 model accounted for approximately 653,358, while the 150 tallied around 146,080 units. The 57 Bel Air was not just a car, it was a cultural phenomenon, a testament to the evolving tastes and aspirations of American people during this time and era of prosperity. Surprisingly, maintaining and caring for a 57 Bel Air has proven to be a fun and rewarding experience for a lot of the enthusiasts. While Chevrolet may not have fully recognized the gem they had created at this time, the Bel Air has endured as a symbol of balance, symmetry, form, and function. Every detail, down to the inclusion of two radio antennas at the back of the car, demonstrates the meticulous attention to design and aesthetics. These antennas, one on each matching tail fin, add to the overall symmetry of the car and remain a distinctive feature that sets the 57 
Chevy Bel Air apart from other models. And as we transition into the realm of collectors, it's essential to highlight the 57 Chevy Bel Air's unique status. Considered the most iconic among the second generation models, the 57 Bel Air has become a highly sought after collector's item. It holds a significant place in car museums, commemorating an era that marked the first mass produced car to transition into a collector's item after the Second World War. Despite being a seemingly obscure model year with a 25 year production history, the 57 Bel Air stands as the original collector's car capturing the essence of a bygone era. While there were more than 1.5 million units of the 1957 model produced, making it a relatively affordable classic car compared to its popularity, the challenge lies in acquiring specific types of Bel Airs. The rarest among them is, of course, the Bel Air two-door Nomad, with only 6,264 units ever produced. Following closely in rarity are the Nomad station wagon at 6,534 units and the convertible at 47,562 units and the series 2402 two-door sedan at 62,751 units. In contrast, the Bel Air four-door sedan with a total of 264,449 units produced in 1957 remains the most common model. Moving from the historical narrative to the contemporary scene, let's explore the pricing dynamics and the market trends surrounding the 57 Chevy Bel Air. If you're on the lookout for one of these classic car todays, the prices can be uh, out of sight on some, and they vary widely based on specifications and rarity. As mentioned earlier, there's a substantial number of 57 Bel Air models available due to the significant production volume. However, securing a pristine mint condition Tudor Bel Air model the preferred choice for you know most collectors, it poses a delightful yet challenging feat. The 57 Chevy Bel Air stands as a super magnificent one-year wonder, having endured 66 years as one of Chevrolet's flagship models. Its timeless appeal continues to captivate generations of car enthusiasts. Whether you're a seasoned collector or a newcomer to the classic car scene, the 57 Chevy Bel Air remains a symbol of elegance, innovation, and the American automotive spirit. So in conclusion, the 57 Chevy Bel Air isn't just a car, it's a piece of living history, a rolling testament to an era that embraced both style and substance. As we navigate through this rich tapestry of features, innovations, and enduring charm, the 57 Chevy Bel Air has endured for all these years. And whether you're seeking a pristine Tudor Bel Air or marveling at the design and performance of 57 Chevy, it's evident that the 57 Chevy Bel Air will forever hold a cherished place in the hearts of automotive enthusiasts worldwide. So that's a short look back at the history of the 57 Chevy. So please hit that subscribe button, like, and share with fellow Tri-Fivers. Classic Chevy Revival is your go-to source for all things classic Chevrolet. So let's keep the classic car community alive and revived. And once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.